If you're gearing up for a financial analyst interview, it's vital to prepare for the typical questions that interviewers may ask. This video will guide you through the top questions you might encounter, along with effective strategies for answering them. 1. Can you walk me through the three main financial statements and how they're interconnected? The three main financial statements are the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. The income statement outlines a company's revenues, costs, and expenses to display its net income. The balance sheet provides an overview of what a company owns, assets, what it owes, liabilities, and the equity belonging to shareholders. The cash flow statement shows the inflow and outflow of cash from operating, investing, and financing activities. These statements are interconnected. The net income from the income statement flows into the cash flow statement as a starting point for the cash from operations. The cash flow statement's ending cash balance is also reported on the balance sheet. Changes in the balance sheet's accounts will be used to determine the cash flow from operations. Therefore, all three statements provide a comprehensive view of a company's financial health. 2. What's your approach to building a financial model from scratch? When building a financial model from scratch, I begin by understanding the objective of the model. I then gather all relevant financial data, including historical and projected figures. Based on this data, I establish assumptions that will guide my model. Next, I structure the model in a clear and logical manner that is easy to follow and understand. This usually involves setting up the income statement, balance sheet and cash flow statement, and linking them together. I also ensure that the model is flexible enough to incorporate changes to the assumptions or data. After constructing the model, I conduct rigorous testing to ensure its accuracy. I do this by checking the mathematical formulas and the logic of the model. Any errors or inconsistencies are immediately corrected. Finally, I present the financial model to stakeholders, explaining its structure, assumptions, and findings. I also provide recommendations based on the model's outputs. This process ensures that the financial model serves its intended purpose effectively and efficiently. 3. How do you see the role of a financial analyst evolving with the advancement of AI and machine learning? The advent of AI and machine learning is rapidly changing the financial industry. In my perspective, the role of a financial analyst will not be replaced but rather enhanced. With AI handling repetitive and mundane tasks, analysts can focus on complex tasks requiring critical thinking and human judgment. Machine learning can assist in analyzing vast datasets, identifying patterns and making predictions, but the interpretation of these findings will still require the analyst's expertise. This technology integration will undoubtedly lead to more efficient and accurate financial analysis. However, it also means analysts need to continuously develop their tech skills to stay relevant in this digital era. 4. Explain the concept of net present value, NPV, and its importance in financial analysis. Net present value, NPV, is a fundamental concept in finance that helps in determining the value of a series of future cash flows, discounted back to the present. It is used as a tool for capital budgeting and investment appraisal, allowing analysts to ascertain the profitability of potential projects or investments. One of the key advantages of using NPV is that it takes into account the time value of money, the notion that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. It also provides a clear measure of the expected monetary gain or loss from a project, thus aiding in decision-making processes. A positive NPV indicates that the projected earnings, in present dollars, are expected to exceed the costs, suggesting a potentially good investment. Conversely, a negative NPV implies the costs outweigh the earnings. Therefore, understanding and correctly calculating NPV is crucial in financial analysis to ensure sound and profitable financial decisions. 5. What methods do you use to forecast revenue? To predict future revenues, I typically use a combination of quantitative and qualitative methods. For example, I take into account historical trends, current market conditions, and any existing sales contracts. I also use regression analysis to identify any significant relationships between revenue and other variables, such as marketing spend or product price. In addition, I consider any industry-specific factors that might impact future sales. For instance, if the company operates in a cyclical industry, I incorporate this into my forecasts. I also take into account any planned product launches or expansions, as well as the company's overall strategic direction. Finally, I constantly monitor actual revenues against my forecasts, making adjustments as necessary to improve the accuracy of future predictions. 6. How do you account for depreciation in financial models? Depreciation is an essential aspect of financial models as it impacts a company's balance sheet, 
income statement, and cash flow statement. When modeling for depreciation in a company's financial model, it's incorporated as a non-cash expense on the income statement. This decreases the company's net income. However, because it's a non-cash expense, it gets added back on the cash flow statement under the cash flow from operating activities section. As for the balance sheet, the accumulated depreciation account increases by the same depreciation expense. This results in a decrease in the value of the company's fixed assets. It's important to note that different methods of depreciation can be used, such as straight line or declining balance, based on the company's policies and the nature of the asset. 7. Can you explain the difference between LIFO and FIFO inventory methods? FIFO, or first in first out, is an inventory management method where the first goods received are the first ones to be sold. This approach is often used when selling perishable goods as it ensures that older stock is sold first. On the other hand, LIFO, or last in first out, is a method where the most recently received goods are sold first. This method is typically used in industries where inventory items do not spoil and prices are rising, as it can help control tax liabilities by reporting lower income. Both methods can have a significant effect on gross profit and tax liabilities and should be chosen carefully based on the specific circumstances and nature of the business. 8. What financial ratios do you consider most important when analyzing company's performance? Analyzing financial ratios is pivotal in assessing a company's performance. I find several ratios to be particularly essential. The profitability ratios, including gross profit margin, net profit margin, and return on equity, provide insights into a company's ability to generate profits against its expenses and equity. Liquidity ratios, such as the current ratio or quick ratio, are useful in determining if a company has enough short-term assets to cover its short-term debt. Asset turnover ratio, an efficiency ratio, reveals how well a company is using its assets to generate revenue. Debt ratios, like debt to equity or debt to asset, help assess the company's financial leverage and risk. Finally, valuation ratios such as P.E. price to earnings, or P.B. price to book, give a quick snapshot of the company's valuation and how it stacks up against its earnings or book value. It's crucial to remember that these ratios should not be evaluated in isolation but should be compared over time or against industry peers for a more accurate analysis. 9. How would you value a company using the discounted cash flow DCF, method? Discounted cash flow DCF, is a valuation method that estimates the worth of an investment based on its future cash flows. The DCF analysis finds the present value of expected future cash flows using a discount rate. A key principle of DCF is that a dollar in the future is not worth as much as one dollar today. To use the DCF method, first, project the cash flows the company is expected to generate in the future. This projection is usually for 5 to 10 years. Next, determine an appropriate discount rate. This rate is often the company's WA circa C then. Calculate the present value of the projected cash flows and the terminal value. This gives the total DCF valuation of the company. The DCF method is complex as it depends on many assumptions and estimates. It's highly sensitive to changes in these assumptions, particularly the discount rate and the growth rate used to calculate the terminal value. Hence, while it is a powerful tool to value a company, it should be used with caution and supplemented with other valuation methods. 10. Why are you interested in this specific financial analyst position at our company? My interest in this specific financial analyst position at your company comes from the unique blend of opportunities that it provides. The position is at the intersection of my passion for finance and my desire to contribute to a dynamic team. I have always admired your company's commitment to innovation and progressive thinking. I am excited about the possibility of working with a diverse group of professionals and learning from their experiences. The role offers the perfect platform for me to apply my skills and knowledge in financial analysis, while also challenging me to grow. I am particularly drawn to the broad range of projects and the potential for personal and professional development. I believe it is a role where I can make a significant impact and drive meaningful results. 11. Describe a time when you had to present complex financial data to non-financial stakeholders. How did you approach this? During my tenure at XYZ Inc., there was an instance where I had to present a detailed financial forecast to our product team. These individuals were not familiar with financial jargon or complex financial models. My approach was to first understand their level of financial knowledge to ensure that I didn't overwhelm them with complex terms. I then tailored my presentation to focus on the key points that were most relevant to their work. 
I used simple language and visual aids like graphs and charts to make the data more accessible and understandable. I made sure to pause frequently to answer questions and verify their understanding. This strategy proved successful as the team was able to grasp the essence of the financial data and how it impacted their product strategy. 12. Tell me about a challenging financial analysis project you've worked on. What made it difficult and how did you overcome those challenges? My most challenging project was working on a financial model for a startup company. The difficulty lay in the lack of historical data available and the inherent unpredictability of startup ventures. I had to make assumptions based on research and industry benchmarks. My role was to create a model that was comprehensive, flexible, and could handle a range of scenarios. To overcome these challenges, I relied heavily on my research skills, industry knowledge, and regular communication with the management team. I also ensured that the model was flexible enough to be easily updated as more data became available or circumstances change. The project was a success, delivering a robust model that was appreciated by the company's management and investors. 13. How do you ensure accuracy in your financial reports and models? Ensuring accuracy in financial reports and models is paramount. It requires diligence, attention to detail, and a strong understanding of financial principles. I start by double-check overall figures and calculations to ensure they align with financial records. I use financial software to help with calculations and to reduce the chance of human error. Cross-referencing is also essential. I compare my results with other financial reports, ensuring consistency and accuracy. If there are discrepancies, I investigate them immediately. Regular financial audits assist in maintaining accuracy. Lastly, I continuously educate myself on changes in financial regulations and accounting standards. This knowledge is crucial for maintaining accurate and up-to-date financial reports. 14. Can you give an example of a time when your financial analysis led to an important business decision? During my time at my previous job, I was tasked with conducting a financial analysis on the profitability of various company products. My analysis showed that while our flagship product was generating the most revenue, it was not the most profitable due to high production and marketing costs. On the other hand, a less popular product had a higher profit margin. Based on my financial analysis, the company decided to shift its focus and resources towards promoting the more profitable product. This decision led to a significant increase in company profits and reaffirmed the importance of detailed financial analysis in making strategic business decisions. 15. How do you stay updated on changes in financial regulations and accounting standards? I always understood that staying updated with changes in financial regulations and accounting standards is crucial in this line of work. My primary method of staying abreast of these changes is through continuous professional development. I regularly attend seminars, webinars, and workshops organized by professional bodies and regulatory agencies. I also subscribe to relevant financial and accounting journals and newsletters, which provide timely updates on any changes in the industry. Additionally, I am an active member of several professional networks and online communities where discussions on regulatory changes take place. Through these methods, I am able to keep myself informed and ensure that my work always complies with the most recent standards and regulations. 16. If a company's expenses are increasing faster than its revenues, what steps would you recommend to address this issue? There are multiple strategies a business can use to tackle this problem. First and foremost, it's essential to conduct a thorough review of the company's financial data to identify the source of the increased expenses and areas where revenues may be lagging. Efficiency improvements may be a viable solution, as these can often lead to cost reduction. This could involve streamlining processes, reducing waste, or implementing new technology. It might also be beneficial to explore new revenue streams or revisit the pricing strategy. Another approach could be to negotiate with suppliers for better terms. Finally, it's crucial to have a solid budgeting process in place to effectively manage and control costs. 17. How would you approach analyzing a potential merger or acquisition? In analyzing a potential merger or acquisition, I would begin by assessing the strategic fit of the two companies. This involves evaluating whether the merger or acquisition would align with the company's long-term goals and strategies. Next, I would conduct a thorough financial analysis, including reviewing historical financial data, projecting future financial performance, and determining the value of the company being acquired. I would also look at non-financial factors, such as industry trends, competitive landscape, and potential synergies. Finally, I would assess the risks associated with the merger or acquisition, such as integration challenges and potential cultural clashes. This approach ensures that a comprehensive analysis is conducted, 
considering both the financial and strategic implications of the merger or acquisition. It also allows for informed decision-making, minimizing the risks and maximizing the potential benefits of the transaction. 18. If you noticed a significant discrepancy in financial data, what steps would you take to investigate and resolve it? When I observe a significant discrepancy in financial data, my first action would be to double-check the numbers to ensure there isn't a simple calculation error. Following that, I would delve deeper into the source of the data, examining the methods used to gather and record it. If the problem persists, I would consult colleagues or supervisors who might offer additional insights. If necessary, I would cross-reference the data with other relevant information to pinpoint the discrepancy. I would also document each step of my investigation to maintain a record of the issue and how it was resolved. 19. A manager asks you to manipulate financial data to make the company look better to investors. How would you handle this situation? As a financial analyst, it is essential to uphold the highest levels of integrity and professional ethics. If a manager asks me to manipulate financial data to mislead investors, I would firmly decline, citing the principles of honesty and transparency. It is crucial to present accurate financial information to investors so they can make informed decisions. Manipulating data not only breaches ethical standards but can also lead to serious legal consequences, damaging the company's reputation and trust. Instead of resorting to such practices, I would propose alternative strategies to improve the company's financial situation and appeal to investors, such as cost reduction or revenue enhancement plans. 20. What do you think are the most important skills for a successful financial analyst? Being a successful financial analyst requires a blend of several skills. First and foremost, analytical skills are paramount, as this role entails scrutinizing financial data and drawing actionable insights from it. Secondly, proficiency in financial software and tools is essential for efficient and accurate work. Thirdly, communication skills are key, as financial analysts often need to explain their findings to stakeholders, some of whom may not have a financial background. Attention to detail can also not be overstated, it can make the distinction between accuracy and costly errors. Lastly, a successful financial analyst should have strong problem-solving skills, as they will often have to figure out complex financial issues and make strategic recommendations. 21. What financial software and tools are you proficient in using? My proficiency extends to several financial software and tools. I'm highly skilled in using Microsoft Excel for data analysis, financial modeling, and forecasting. I am also familiar with QuickBooks for accounting purposes and SAP for enterprise resource planning. For financial analysis, I utilize software like Tableau to help visualize financial data more effectively. Usage of SQL and Python for data manipulation and automation is also part of my skill set. I am always open to learning new tools as per the business requirements. Remember, preparation is key when looking to impress potential employers. If you found this content helpful, please do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more resources and guides like this one. Best of luck with your interview.